at Boflex Barbie here, your host of the Flex Pretty Podcast. And I am super excited because today I got a very special guest, y'all. The one, the only, Baha Yogi is here. <laughs> Hello. I ain't call your full government name because I want you to tell the people, you know. Oh, tell what? us who you are. You know the drill. Who you are, what you do. <laughs> My name is Alexandra. Kaufman. I wasn't I, expecting you to give us the full. <laughs> <laughs> when you say government, well, I was I mean, like, okay, you, you don't have. To, I mean, okay. we can do the full thing. <laughs> but I mean, people just call me Alex. I don't really yeah. go by Alexandra. Um, and I'm a yoga instructor. I am an entrepreneur. I have multiple businesses. I teach yoga, host yoga retreats, travel, and just be a whole vibe. Per. <laughs> per. <laughs> awesome. So. Alex, we know you as Baha Yogi, right? Mm -hmm. The yoga instructor, yoga sensation, Bahamian national treasure. Ooh, you're I like also this. I you're like also this. Austrian, right? Yes, Austrian Bahamian. Austrian Bahamian. Your mom's Bahamian. And my dad's Austrian. Dad's Austrian. Yeah. Um, tell us about your. You grew up here in the Bahamas. Yes. Yeah. Tell Born, us. bred, good dad. Again, per. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, tell us about childhood, Alex. Like, how was your childhood Ooh. growing up? Um, and then I guess you can transition from that into if it if it does connect. If not, then we mm. could pause. But if it does connect, how well. did you end up in the yoga space? <laughs> <laughs> childhood, Alex was you know a child, and it was it was rough at some points. But um, I feel like my mom was the one that kind of kept me going and to become the woman I am today. Uh, yeah, little rocky waters growing up, but other than that, it was a beautiful experience. I mean, there's no connection to me practicing yoga. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like if anyone told me back in the day that I would have been a yoga instructor, I would have just burst out laughing because that was not in the cards at all. Like, I wanted to be a forensic pathologist, and that's... For, what does the forensic pathologist do? I know it's dead people, something <laughs> with dead people. <laughs> Uh, yes. Yeah, so they figure out how people died. Uh, okay. Um, and that was my that was my intention. That's that was my goal. From I was like eight, I was you know dissecting everything that I could find. My mommy was a little concerned. Yeah. She was a little concerned. Naturally. <laughs> but um, you know, I mean, I think it turned out for the best. So yeah. So I'm a yoga instructor now. But no, childhood was great. I spent majority of my time here in the Bahamas. Um. I went to school here until grade eight, and then I went to boarding school in Canada. And in between that, I'd go back and forth to Austria. Okay. But majority of my time definitely was growing up here in the Bahamas. Um, when it comes to yoga, I started yoga hmm, a while back, but I wasn't consistent because I, I didn't like it. I was kind of like, mm, <laughs> this is boring, <laughs> which is wild because when people tell me that now, they're like, yeah, I ain't doing yoga because yoga boring. I get mad. And I'm like, how dare you? Yeah, but I, you I, were once there. <laughs> I was once there. And I mean, I could understand because there are a lot of like misconceptions about yoga. A lot of times people will be like, you know, yoga has to be slow or you have to be flexible to do yoga. So that was what I was thinking. But then eventually I found the style of yoga for me. And that's when it kind of all like the puzzle pieces fit. About how long did it take you to find like from when you started off and on to like finding this is my this is my home now. I took my first yoga class in university. So that would have been like oh, I'm going to age myself. That would have been like <laughs> <laughs> 2009. Mm -hmm. um, and I just like dropped it cold turkey. I think I did probably like two classes and then when i came back to nassau i started yoga in 2013 while i was pregnant and that was the moment where i realized okay not only is this something that i like doing from a physical standpoint but this is something that also helps me mentally and that was mm -hmm. definitely needed at, at that point point. and do you think being pregnant like also like emotionally connected you to yoga a bit more yeah, because I mean, my pregnancy wasn't wasn't the greatest. The my whole life at that point was just a little not do not recommend. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like yoga for me was like an outlet, okay. and it was like the light at the end of the tunnel because it was a real struggle for me. I was real young too. I was what twenty twenty one, I think. 
at that time. So I really was trying to find who I was as a person. And yoga kind of brought it all together by giving me that outlet to just, you know, get away and practice, mm-hmm. practice, practice. Okay, I get that. I kind of had a similar connection to fitness too. It was like a rough, rough time in life and like this yeah. thing, this thing making a little bit of sense. Right? <laughs> it's just like, okay, this, this helps. This is going to yeah. help me from doing things I shouldn't be doing. Yeah. I get that. So you found your lane in, in your personal practice. Um, you said that was around 2013. 2013. Yeah. And so walk me through how you went from figuring out, okay, this is a style that I like to now I'm going to teach. I want to become, or what, what sparked the desire to want to teach? Was it people watching you practice or was it like you just really loved it and was like, I want to teach? <laughs> it was, it was interesting because like I was practicing nonstop. And I mean, like when I say outlet, this was like an outlet. Like I would lock myself in that room just to get away from everything and everyone for like hours on end. And I was becoming a little a little obsessed mm-hmm. and obviously by then you know people were asking questions and then I after I had my daughter my procrastination kind of hit in because you know you're going through body image issues and just the you know shock of having a child at 21 years old um and that's when my my intent kind of decreased a little bit so then I started Instagram because that was the thing then you know and it was a way for me to stay focused and to kind of have that accountability Mm -hmm. and then after I did that I saw a bunch of people started following me and I was like what the hell but the thing (laughs) is I should mention though Instagram was so different back then like that's when it was like a community like everyone like nothing was like you know edited or photoshopped or filtered or anything so it it was like the right kind of community to kind of push me into the right lane of even thinking about being a yoga teacher Mm -hmm. so i think with you know creating that community having that like support from outside of the bahamas and then also having friends and family inside the bahamas asking me how do i do this i want to try that that was like okay maybe this could be a thing (laughs) you know why not why not let's (laughs) let's give it a try so you decided this was in 2000, this is a this few was years after. 2014. 14, okay, so about a year. Yeah. A year after you got in your got consistent Got into the vibe. Journey. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. So you decided, where, where did you start with the instructing? Like, was it in person, online? No, I was, well, at first I would just teach like my friends and my family. And that was before I was certified. <laughs> so. <laughs> Don't worry. They didn't come for you. <laughs> yeah, that was before I was certified. And then I um, was trying to get off to go to certification, but that was expensive. So I did like a GoFundMe to like make some money. But then I ended up stumbling upon this job where I had to travel to Abaco um, through a friend of mine that I had met who also did yoga. And they wanted me to teach yoga there. And in order for me to teach yoga there, they were like, okay, well, we'll send you off to get trained. And I was like, what? Don't need that GoFundMe anymore. (laughs) So then I started um, teaching full time. Like I got thrown into the fire. This was in like in person. This was in person. So I went from just, you know, dilly dallying, teaching my friends and family to getting thrown into yoga teacher training, which was like a two months intensive. And then right after that, like full blown into work and my first yoga class was like every contraindication possible i think i had like a pregnant woman (laughs) a woman that never did yoga before a man who was like a seasoned yoga teacher and then a man who had just like broke his hip and i was just like could this get any fucking worse what do we do today (laughs) can we just breathe (laughs) i like i mean most people who go through yoga teacher training they know that you get stuck with this like one sequence and a lot of people just end up doing that same sequence over and over and over so i took that one sequence and it was like a power yoga class so it was intense and i was like how am i supposed to teach all these random types of people it's like a (laughs) vast demographic of people but yeah so i got thrown straight into face-to-face person group classes teaching and how long did you do that for oh that was what like 20 2015 i think 
I started until 2017 was I was working my nine to five teaching teaching the yogas. Okay, maybe so it's not a traditional. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't a actual nine to five. <laughs> I mean, you know, we had some kind of <laughs> close enough, like seven seven to three. You know, yeah, fitness people do stuff early. Yeah, we got a different time block. Yeah, yeah, but that's really cool. Um, so talk me through. I know you said Instagram kind of pushed you into yeah. deciding to become an instructor, right? Yeah. Um, when did you get on Instagram? Do you remember what year? 20... I, joined in, I joined in 2012, I think. 2012? Yeah, like my first, I still have my Jeez. very first post of like a piece of a bohemian dinner. But <laughs> your, your account now was like your first account? Yeah. Oh, see, no. So I had my first account in 2012. And okay. then the, like the Baha Yogi account came like august 2014 so your first account was like more your, your personal life yeah okay. that was like personal life and then at that point i was ready to just say uh -uh, no i want to focus on me now yeah. so that's when i just did my yoga account which was by yogi and that was from 2014 yeah my my first it's always been both like barbie but it was not always like Solely fit, like fitness. I was posting my peas and rice dinner and all kind of stuff on there. I look back like, what were you doing? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I, but I feel like that's interesting though, because even like, because I still have all of my old pictures on there, so you could scroll. I mean, you gotta, you gotta, don't do, you this. gotta deep dive. <laughs> don't, don't do not deep dive because it was a struggle when I first started. Like, and you could see from like from whence I came. Like, I haven't deleted anything, mm -hmm. so you could see the beginning photos of you know me not knowing what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I love that because I want people to know that, you know, everyone starts somewhere. somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I look back at videos of when I was practicing, and I'm just like, what are you doing? <laughs> but I mean, it's good to have that, right? And that's exactly the purpose that Instagram served for me yeah. to have that, like, this library of exactly. your progress. Yeah. Exactly. Because I really wasn't expecting it to go this far. No? No, boy. I was like, <laughs> what is this? Like, people paying me to teach them how to stretch? Like, this is wild. Does it ever feel, like, overwhelming? Or did it ever at any point feel overwhelming when you had, like, you look at your, you're, like, how, almost, what, half a million? Yeah. Or more than half a million? Yeah, it's... And you're like, all these people are, like, watching me, and they're expecting... It's still me. overwhelming. I feel like it was overwhelming from jump. Like, especially mm -hmm. when I started, when people started recognizing me and stuff. And, you know, when celebrities started following me, I was just like, okay, this is getting out of <laughs> hand. Like, what the hell? But I feel like it also is a good push to keep going and outside from, you know, anyone famous or whatever, but just, you know, the people that reach out to me to let me know that it's inspiring. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially in the yoga field, like, there's not much representation. You don't see much people of color really and especially when i first started it was just the same type of person it was mm -hmm. just you know thin white bodies and mm -hmm. that's just the reality of it so i think for me now in this space like it's it's a motivation because yeah. i feel like i was able to put a space for representatives for representing women that you know look like me or you know women who just want to have a space held for them yeah, I definitely, I mean, I, I don't see a lot of it. I, I'm seeing more. You're seeing more, more now. now. Yeah, but but that's, that's within the last maybe five years. I'm seeing a bit more. Yeah, the industry is very whitewashed. And it's ironic because that's not where yoga comes from. But um, it's just, it's very interesting. But no, I, it definitely is overwhelming to see the growth that I've made and I'm continuing to make and the places it's taken me. I'm... Mm -hmm. um, definitely extremely grateful that's what, what's that. been the the most amazing place that yoga has taken you oh that's so hard top, our top three top uh, oh jeez break it up i get, I'm getting nervous <laughs> <laughs> um i'd say retreat wise i no, would no. not it doesn't have to be retreat it could be work um it could be, be it means so i'm saying yoga but it could be I don't want to say not yoga, but <laughs> I get what you mean. You know what I mean? Being, yeah. The exposure. Yeah. That being Baha Yogi has. Um, um, given I you the think. Opportunity to go. Okay. Top. I'll, I'll do top two. 
So right, first awesome. one was I did this um, um, health, health and wellness seminar in South Africa. Mm-hmm. And I got flown out to South Africa to speak on a panel with a bunch of different guests. And, you know, I was on there and it was cool. And I was like, all right. Come to find out the dude who was on the panel with me was Nelson Mandela's doctor. And I had to take a step back and I was just like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> like how me and this man views in like on the same panel is wild <laughs> to me like we on the same flyer that's insane like so things like that, that just cool. the types of people that i've met and then the second one probably would be when i worked with um chloe kardashian for good american mm-hmm. that was a whole wild stint she had reached out to me and i was just like this ain't real like ain't no way this <laughs> you know the real deal did you go to la or la, LA. and i worked with them for a couple of years actually i mean every so often they'll send me some nice jeans and stuff so mm-hmm. yeah that's a vibe but i mean just that the people that i've met outside even just famous people but also just the different types of people i've met on retreats and classes it's just is mind-boggling where's your favorite retreat i feel oh, like i know this one you'll put me on <laughs> Greece. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, Greece. Greece is like, Greece has my soul, my heart. (laughs) Every year. I mean, obviously, I love all the retreat spaces I go to. Is Greece the only one that you repeat each year? Or are there other other places you go to? So far, it's the only one that's been the most consistent. Because that was the first retreat I ever did. Well, maybe that's why. Yeah, so it's like, I'm like connected to that spot. So I do that spot every single year. year. What, What month is it usually? And normally I'll do it in the summertime. So it'll be like June to August. Okay. Cool. Yeah. What else do I want to ask you? I don't know. You tell me. Um, what? Well, I think you just answered that. I feel like you did. I was going to ask you, what's your favorite thing? Well, now I can ask you, what's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite thing about instructing besides the people? besides the people besides the people the connections and the places that you've been able like when you have to instruct a class or go to an event or whatever type virtual in person my favorite thing about instructing is um helping people along their journey so to see the growth that's one of like my favorite things especially when you like start off with people who are like totally hesitant with yoga and they're like Ugh, i don't want to do this da, 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 da. or they're like totally hating themselves in the beginning like i remember i had this one client um and he was about 70 years old mm-hmm. and when he started yeah, his wife was much younger than him and pushed him <laughs> into yoga class with me one-on-ones because mm-hmm. she wanted him to help his golf game and also he had like arthritis and stuff like that mm-hmm first to start he was just like Ugh, i don't want to do this i'm just doing here. it because you know my wife wants me to do it and i was just like look just take your time you'll you'll learn to love it <laughs> <laughs> you'll learn to love it within like i'd say within like six weeks time this man was coming into class with his shirt off Uh-oh. <laughs> ready to do arm balances <laughs> back bends and like hunting me down for extra yeah. classes. <laughs> so I think one of my favorite things about teaching is just to see that growth, just to see when people kind of let go of their inhibitions and let go of that, you know, negative self-talk of I can't do this to then getting to a point where they're like, holy shit, I, I just lo- did that. I love this. Yes. <laughs> or even like, you know, certain poses and stuff like people will be like, oh, I can't. You do arm balances or headstands or this, that and the third. And then that like aha moment when they get it, that like fills my soul like that just makes me realize like (laughs) wow i love doing this so i i would say my favorite part is just helping people okay what's your least favorite thing (laughs) how did i know it's coming um my least favorite thing about teaching is hmm i would say when when people just aren't motivated (laughs) (laughs) People like, that, that show up, I mean, do you see this a lot? Like, because I've experienced, like, when I used to instruct, um, I don't know if I should call it a gym, but <laughs> I used to instruct at a very nice gym. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> I'd have people come in, you know, they just came to, to say that they came to get yes. the Instagram photos to record yes. a little bit. They don't come to work out. Yes. 
Yes, you know what I mean. They so come, that's that. So put on the cute fit yes. and roll the mat out. And yes, that's exactly what I mean. But they ain't really come to. So it's like I, I think that's what I don't like sometimes i mean luckily i don't get these types of people often mm-hmm. but i feel like you, you have some people that really just come for the aesthetic mm-hmm. and they don't allow themselves to be fully immersed in learning mm-hmm. yoga and that to me is like it can be taxing obviously i'm still you know a teacher and i'm still there and i still hold space for them but for me it just feels like i'm like teaching a wall it's like if you already right. came with this off. Yeah. yeah like if you already came with this preconceived notion that either a you know everything or b you know you just have for uh, you know the photos or the videos or whatever or the smoothie after <laughs> <laughs> then it's just like you know why am i even here right yeah. but then also i have experienced some really weird uh things with being a teacher especially with being a teacher at color Mm-hmm. so that would also be another one of my off moments of being what, a teacher what do you mean Ooh, specific child. i feel like you told me this story before yeah i think i think you should share it because it sticks to me like being a teacher of color i've experienced a lot and it's just like a lot of times people don't think you're a yoga teacher they don't feel like you're a good enough yoga teacher i remember one time <laughs> i was uh prepping the studio for a class and this lady came in and she looked at me real stern and she was like make sure you mop the floors before the yoga teacher gets here and i'm like Burr. <laughs> <laughs> i was like big and bull name tag yeah alex kaufman yoga instructor you can see this uh, maybe i mean janet is <sighs> where <laughs> Child, i was like maybe not yoga clothes i mean put the con i was context, obviously context <laughs> a yoga teacher and yeah. i was like mom i am the yoga teacher and she was like gasp i didn't know you people did yoga and i was like you people, people we created yoga we made it it, it was wild is that what you said no, I didn't. Because, you know, in <laughs> hospitality, you have to still <clears throat> be nice. And you're like, mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry for the confusion. But, I mean, now, the, me now would not but have said that. Me this, now. this was during your work. Yeah, this was during your seven my... seven to three. Yeah, okay. my seven to three hospitality. I was going to say, because you weren't coming up into my... <laughs> no, no, no. My no. brand class Mm-mm. talking Mm-mm. like Mm-mm. that. Ain't okay. no way. But <laughs> even then, she was just like, oh, I'll have to think about if I'm coming to take this class. And I'm just like, well, you go ahead and you think about that. But... Take your time. <laughs> yeah, I've had weird moments. I've had people that will, you know, question if I know anything. People mm-hmm. who would just sit in the back of class to make sure that I'm a good teacher before they take the class. And I feel like people kind of have preconceived notions based on how they see me on Instagram because I'm in a bikini. Oh, that you're going to teach in a bikini. Oh no. (laughs) Yeah. Because people assume that since I'm in a bikini, I'm on the beach that I guess I'm some kind of bimbo that I'm not like smart, that I don't know what I'm doing. And I've had people tell me that they were like, Oh, I thought you were just about taking photos on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I didn't think you actually knew what you were doing. Hitting the splits. And yeah that, and i'm just that's like it. that's just so wild to me but i mean for the record i am well versed in yoga anatomy <laughs> and all of those sorts so you know no need to have preconceived notions but i think that's one of the most uncomfortable parts of teaching it's like sometimes people just don't take me seriously which is wild because i don't think any of those things should lead to people not taking me seriously I agree it's yeah. like come on stick with the times it's 2023 <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we don't have to be <laughs> one thing. <laughs> you know, we are well-versed. Yeah. Well-versed. Yeah, but I get that. I've, I've heard a lot of... I've had even people come on the podcast, other people in the fitness space, wellness space, say that, you know, their experiences with... Starting out, especially, they were like, you know, people didn't... As a woman, mm-hmm. people didn't take them seriously, didn't think they knew what they... Yeah. They, they knew their stuff or they were qualified to give mm-hmm. people advice. and. and yeah, I also find it really interesting because I really wonder what um, what parts of me play a deeper role in them thinking that. If it, Is it the fact that, I mean, because this is outside the Bahamas too. This is mm-hmm. like when I've taught, you know, all over, especially when I teach in the States sometimes, it can be a little like shocking Mm-hmm. Um, that I'm a yoga teacher. I'm not sure if it's because, you know, I'm a person of color. I'm not sure if it's because I'm from the Bahamas or if I'm not sure if it's because, you know, how my Instagram is because I'm always on the beach, et cetera, et cetera. But I feel like it's always interesting to hear what people's um, assumptions are. Do you find that the people that come to 
well, I guess that would make sense. But people that come to your classes, they're people that follow you from social media. Do you think they come with these assumptions to be like prove to prove themselves right or to be like or is it just like they um, come and then they realize like, okay, I was wrong. Yeah, I feel like there might be a small percentage of people that do that. Majority of people that come to my classes or come to my retreats, they actually know, okay, wow, she knows her shit. She knows her stuff, yeah. Yeah. But um I like they've taken my online classes or like things like that. But these are people that are in your like your community. Exactly. Yeah. But I, I'm sure I do have some people that are like, let me make sure she know her shit <laughs> kind of vibe. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'm always like mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever the fuck you thought. <laughs> but um but yeah, I, I'm I'm certain there's a lot of people like that. Because as I said before, I've had people literally tell me to like, my face, yeah. like, Oh, I wasn't expecting you to know shit. I just like I think that's just wild. Like. It's wild to me. Like <laughs> even I remember someone asked me, like they were talking about um, Canada, and I was just like, yeah, you know, I lived in Toronto for a bit, and they're like, what? <laughs> and they're like, oh, we didn't know, you know, Bahamians traveled that much, and I'm like, it's a direct flight. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I went to University of Toronto, which is where like, was that? Where when they where, were you, was, where were you having this conversation? That was at my stuff in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I just wanted it was it hair or no it, it was hair. Okay. It was hair. Um but it was the the comment was made by someone who's not from here. Yeah. Um and I was like I went to University of Toronto, which is like one of the best universities mm-hmm. in Canada and she was just like <gasps> mind blown. Yeah. Like, Oh, you went to university? And I'm just like, Yeah. And Wild, eh? I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? But yeah. yeah, no, it's always interesting. And I feel like social media kind of lends to that too because people Maybe. think they know you. Yeah. And they don't, they see or they know you, they feel they know you from what you decide to exactly. share. Exactly. And depending on what that is, they feel like, right, I know. Entitled. Yeah, I know everything about Yes. It. Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I get that. So Alex, you mentioned earlier that when you're talking about Instagram, when you got on Instagram, it was well, back in the, we say in the old days. <laughs> in the you know, old days. <laughs> that 2012, 2014, it was different. And mm-hmm. I agree, it was definitely a different space. But talk me through some of, I mean, well, talk me through that. Like, did you, when do you feel like it switched <sighs> from being this like supportive community to like, I need to get on here and flex and filter and. I don't and only show the highlights. I feel like honestly, when I got on in 2012, I was sharing whatever, like yeah, it was I, my shoes, exactly. my, my food, the sky. Like I look back at it and I'm just like, I was like doing yoga poses straight out the bed. Like I, <laughs> <laughs> like I still got bridal on my mouth. I got baby in my eye. Like I was just like no fucks given, and I love it. Yeah. And I and I try to bring that back now. Like I will post, you know things that just ain't working out i will just let people know hey i ain't good at that but i feel like for me especially i feel like once i started gaining more followers i almost immediately felt like i had to pretend to be something i wasn't um there was like Mm -hmm. this moment in my instagram my practice where i was then trying to emulate what other people were doing and it just felt so cringe to me. So I was, I mean, back in the day, everyone had like a certain brand of mm-hmm. yoga leggings. I'm not going to mention. And I was just like trying to be like that person. And that was the moment when I was just like, why am I even doing this? And then I was like, how can I convey what my practice is and still make it something that belongs to me? Mm-hmm. And that was when I went on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm from the Bahamas, yeah. I went on the beach with a bikini. <laughs> um, yeah, I get this all the time. Why do you practice yoga in a bikini? It's wild. But anyways, <laughs> aside from that. Um, so that was a way of me kind of creating my own space your mark, and yeah. utilizing the things around me. Because also at that time, I was living in a tiny ass apartment and I didn't have no place to put no yoga mat anyway. <laughs> so... I had to take it outside, right? Without breaking things up. (laughs) Exactly. So I think for me, maybe that was probably about like two years in of practicing and being on Instagram that I kind of felt there was a shift. Mm -hmm. And I got caught up in that shift where I was trying to make everything look perfect. Mm -hmm. And that just didn't feel like, it didn't feel like me. So that's when I kind of reeled it back in. I was just like, you know what? We are posting, no bucks given. We're going to post whatever we want, whenever we want, however we want. And that was, I think, the beginning of 
me now. And that's still my Instagram to this day. Yeah, and I think that's, I think Instagram also went through this, this phase of where they, they did want the perfect aesthetics. And you mm-hmm. know, like everyone was selling this, this is how your Instagram should look. Yeah. And this is what you should aim to do. And this you should, should do like sh- color coding. And this and should all be your strategy things. and all this other stuff. And then I think everyone was like, we, we tired of everyone looking the same. Yes. So now we want the authenticity. right? Yes. And so now I see a lot of people going, it's, I think it's a little mixed now, but I see a lot of people now shifting to like, I want to share my, mm-hmm. you know, I want to share my. Now my I of. feel like it's going back to authenticity. Like I think that in this day and age, you know, especially after going through a pandemic and we really saw people <laughs> at their like lowest Everybody lows. Everybody's struggling. I don't know yeah. who you was. We're in the <laughs> stage now where it's just like, I want to see the real you. Yeah, let's be real. And even like when I scroll through Instagram, like I tired of seeing everything that's perfect or whatever. Yeah. Like I want to see some cellulite. I want to see some stretch marks. <laughs> I want to see some rolls. Yeah. I want to see some, you know, ingrown hair. I want to see it all. <laughs> like I want the real I deal. The, I love the ingrown hair. <laughs> More or less. Yeah, More yeah, less. I got you. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> but I just, I just want it to be real because yeah. even like sometimes I catch myself scrolling through Instagram and I just start like nitpicking and i per se don't want to give that kind of content which is why i make sure my content is as as real as possible um it may seem perfect to some people but to me it's definitely me putting my all out there yeah but i think now we're in that space where more people are um valuing authenticity yeah i agree i think i don't know like i said i think the pandemic maybe that was a struggle they were just fed up like yeah i I, I was fed up give give me real stuff (laughs) (laughs) give me the real stuff please what do you think misconcept on misconceptions you know (laughs) we touched on that like people they they have this idea you who Mm -hmm. you are based on you doing yoga in a bikini on instagram I child, I hear a lot. I the things I say about myself. What, I what's like, the most wild rumor you've heard about yourself? Ooh, I've heard that I just be selling. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I be hearing all kind of things. But you know, me and Ethan go in this debate a lot. Like he's like, nowadays a lot of women are like, I didn't say modern women. Women in today's day, because it ain't just I don't know what modern women means. But he's like, a lot of women now are like have this. Uh, you know, a man has to be paying for me to do X, Y, Z and paying yeah. for X. He's like, but isn't that just another way of, of selling? Like, is that not selling yourself? You're saying, I'm not going to sleep with you. I'm not going to be in a relationship with you unless you're paying yeah. for X, Y, Z. I like, think, like, for me, the whole the whole thing that I've heard is that I am, I guess, I am a... <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm so scared. I'm so scared of what you're about to say. Because <laughs> you don't want to say it. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I've heard a lot of things. Like, people just make assumptions about me since I'm in a bikini. They just I guess, assume that I'm, like, I don't want to say loose because that's just a weird term. <laughs> because we shouldn't be judging women and your... their sexual history anyway. That's your... But they they make assumptions that I guess I'm just an ig model or whatever Mm -hmm. and you know who just friends with a bunch of celebrities and this that and the third like it's never it's never taking me seriously which is which is really wild to me but i mean there's only so much i can do about that because it's it's really just how my body shape because if i was like thick like skinny or if you were a slim gym yes (laughs) it wouldn't be an issue right I've, i've seen other content creators exactly create content in bikinis and skimpy stuff exactly with and not as many curves and, and i <laughs> think that just goes to show the sexualization of curvy women and that's something that i deal with a lot even when it comes to like modeling gigs and stuff mm-hmm. like that there's like an there's like a, a in between so either you're like super skinny and then you know it'll be like art or fashion mm-hmm. or if you're like really heavy set then it'll be like body positivity confidence like which also i think is like a backhanded to really you know is. bigger women like mm-hmm. oh you're so confident for doing that like no she's just existing she is herself she's her you don't <laughs> have to deem it to confidence or whatever mm-hmm. but in the middle there's like curvy women who look like me and then it's just like use a hoe <laughs> <laughs> straight up <laughs> too much breast too much bongi yeah, use a hoe you, like, you can't you're just wa- you're walking sex like 
<laughs> exactly. Exactly. So no matter what I do. So even if people say, oh, put on some clothes. Like I remember they have this like I have this photo of me holding a bird and the bird is in the <laughs> foreground. I kid you not. It's still on my page. The bird is in my foreground and I'm in the background and I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's just my face and my upper body in the in the picture. And I still had someone send me that photo and said, oh, yeah, I love how you're holding that bird. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't matter no. what you're wearing. No. People are going to come with their assumptions anyway. And that's really not it's not my priority how did you respond to that guy i did you not didn't. respond i was just like this is wild this is wild to me but yeah at the end of the day it's not my responsibility to take care no. how anyone perceives me no. because people could be perceiving me all day long at the end of the day i know who i am and that's just all that matters really but i it is wild i i be hearing things about myself that i just be like really tell me more what else did I do? These are the wildest was all that you saw. Yeah, <laughs> that I'm, I guess, uh, IG, oh, IG know. model, IG model. Yeah, but, but it's wild. Mm. But yeah, and then people <laughs> will kind of make assumption based on like who follows me and things like that. It's just few plenty fun. time, <laughs> right? And I'm just like all this energy, right? You could be doing something so much. You more could be positive, making yourself a better person. You could be becoming the better version of yourself instead of spending all this time analyzing what I post and why I post on Instagram. And like, I feel like it it gets even more stressful because the space that I'm in now of being able to wear a bikini on the beach, especially a thong bikini. Let my fucking cellulite swing in the wind. <laughs> I would have never, ever imagined getting to this space because I grew up deep in like insecurity, self-esteem issues. Mm -hmm. Like it was a real struggle for me beginning to like love myself, learning how to love myself. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's wild that you do all this inner work to come to this space now to still have to deal with horrible people yeah. that make assumptions of who you are. And they don't know like, all the work you put in yeah. they don't know how you still struggle in now mm -hmm. when you look in the mirror like to some people you know you may seem like you look perfect or you have the gold body or whatever but you never reach that state where you're just like wow this is great <laughs> <laughs> especially uh, women yeah especially we, as women right because you know our bodies are trends like yeah. just the other day they were like oh you know the small waist big hip is no longer popular everyone wants to be skinny and i'm like well that's just how i'm shaped yeah. so how is this no longer a trend <laughs> now like i'm just what supposed to take my bungee off yeah well some of them can't <laughs> for the record i cannot yeah she can i cannot some people can <laughs> some people can but not not i but yeah no i feel like it's just it's wild to me and it hurts sometimes because i've come far Mm -hmm. for you know loving my body and loving you know the space that I'm, that I'm in and also that consistent um, effort to growing into the woman that I want to become yeah I, I agree I think it's it hurts because like you said you do all that inner work and then you're judged solely on what you what, what someone sees exactly which is also what I'm allowing you to see so exactly like i'm sharing this you know because not i'm sure not, not sharing it for you but i'm sharing it because i've come to a space where now it's just like wow i, I feel, feel like i, feel I look good, good. yeah i feel I good, feel good. <laughs> this is this like i look nice like wow look at me <laughs> growth <laughs> yeah i told i totally get that i when i started out like from i was 14 people was telling me you can get bulky you can be big you can you need to stop right hair is good like don't do no more and i'm like Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, and that's another thing. People always have, like, opinions. Like, oh, yeah. you gained weight. You lost too much weight. I'm just like, can you not? Like, And that's another woman. Like, we fluctuate so much as we get older, as we our bodies are going through something. Three weeks out of yeah, the four. Exactly. <laughs> every month. So, like, yes, our bodies are going to change. And I, I get those questions all the time, especially from other women. They're like, well, how much do you weigh? How tall are you? This, that, and the third. Like, what do you eat? And Worry I'm just like, <laughs> and I tell them, I'm just like, look, like, please just focus on creating a you that you are happy to, you know, live with, to see. Like, you don't have to do exactly what anyone else is doing because what I eat, what I do may not work for you. You mm -hmm. have to trial and error, find what works for you within a healthy standpoint. Mm -hmm. 
of, you know, on a mentally sane standpoint that you can maintain that. It's not just like, you know, crash dieting or things like that. It's building that woman that you, when you look in the mirror, when you wake up in the, in the morning, you're like, wow, I love you. Yeah. And I'm going to continue to work on you. Right. But it's just, it's wild how the microscope is on us as women, mm -hmm. especially with social media. And that's just something that I really just have to take a step back from sometimes. Cause I what, social like, media in, in total <laughs> girl, it's a struggle yeah. out here. Do you, do you feel like because so much of your, your work is connected to social media that sometimes it is hard to actually step. I struggle with it a lot. Like I, I'm like, I aspire to get to the point where I could just give my phone my credentials to someone and be like, I need you to, to deal with this. I think, <laughs> I think about it all the time. I ain't gonna lie. I just be like, you want to get someone to manage it? Not even that. Like maybe today is the day I just, I give up, give up, <laughs> go off grid and you know, like change my name. Have you taken any breaks from social media before? Like, Long, mm. like longer breaks i mean not a break per se when it's just like i shut everything down but i mean there are some times where i don't post and if i don't post some people will message me are you okay <laughs> <laughs> like i'm fine i'm good I'm but no i mean i i take breaks in the sense of just you know trying to take a step back and yeah, putting the phone down for putting a while. the phone down for a bit but it's hard it's hard when it's your job yeah because especially now you know as your job, you have to continue with the growth. You have to continue with the engagement. You have mm -hmm. to continue with the traction. And it's just like, now it's like, before Instagram, you could just post a photo, you're fine. Now you have to do video content, you have to do reels and carousels. And <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I'm just like, it's, it's becoming a lot, but it is luckily, and not many people can say this, it's something that I love to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I am grateful that I have a career that is fairly easy. Right. I just I mean, I, I say that it's income. easy because you enjoy it. Exactly. It's easy because I enjoy it, but also because, you know, it's a passion and yeah, it's, it's all connected for you. To exactly. And I'm doing it on my own time or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm grateful for that. But sometimes it is it is, you know, taxing yeah. where I, when, I you, just, when you add in all the pers personalities and the and the actual engagement, that's not always positive. Your body and your mind, your body still. Yeah. has to go through all of that right? yeah you still gotta you still gotta read the stuff you don't necessarily want to see exactly <laughs> and, and at the same time be a mother like that in itself is. we didn't talk about that <laughs> well we did a little bit we talked about the pregnancy thank you yes how so you had finn yes finn finn at 21 21 21 you were 21 when you had her yeah okay and well yeah we ain't gonna tell them yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know how Finn is, but <laughs> she's 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 of age. She's, <laughs> she's of age. <laughs> she's she's getting there. She's she's old. She's nine. How was how has motherhood been for you? I know you said it was a bit of a struggle having yeah. her. You say young, really young. Now, I feel now like that's twenty one. Now is like the thing is for me. I feel like that's young because I was. It was not you know in the in the plan yeah that's not that's not how i saw life going but it worked out for the best because you know i love that little girl like she's yeah. my best friend but um i mean as a single mother she is my everything she is my purpose my passion i know that sounds so cliche i feel like everyone says that <laughs> but like the reason i am who I am right now, like working on my confidence, working on my mental health, working on, you know, being able to run a business like on my own for my own, like just is everything is for her. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to inspire her. And I, I already see like little pockets of it, of how she like, you know, she doesn't care. She doesn't give she a seems fuck. A, I've, I've only seen her on social media. She just looks like the most confident. Like. Oh, yes. <laughs> she she is everything. I and and outside from just, you know, you know, like soaking up her confidence, she is very emotionally in tune. And that's, that's something that I really wanted to make sure that she had a grasp on because it was something that I didn't really have much when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah that girl she is my everything like she and even like sometimes she'll be like aren't you supposed to be recording content <laughs> she'll be like keep you accountable and she'll be telling people <laughs> like people are recognizing and she'll be like yeah i'm baja yogi uh, 2.0 oh it's it <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. She's like you don't know who my mommy is my mommy she instagram famous i was oh like my oh god. my god Calm yeah, down. She's, she's at that Calm. age now she can she can pop up yeah even like some of her little friends at school they'd be like that's your mommy 
that shit on me. Oh my God, I thought that was just a thought. I was just like, okay, uh, calm down. <laughs> calm down. <laughs> Let, let's calm down. <laughs> but no, it, it's being a mother is, is a beautiful thing. I and love that. I feel like I never could have guessed how amazing it would have been. But to have a little mini, like a little mini me, because she literally is me. Like I can almost like. Yeah, look at like too. Yeah. <laughs> I could guess what she's going to do by based on what I would have done at her age. And while that is kind of scary, yeah, especially for bit. her teenage years, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm into it because well, you know, she's going to be good. Yeah, no, she's going to be great. She's going to be great. Cause at least she'll get the confidence to start yeah. or at least have like the foundation. And then I she had has nothing. you as the guide too. Cause exactly. Exactly. Cause I was just like, I was like swinging in the dock <laughs> when I was growing up. Like, I, it was a struggle. It was a real struggle. Okay. Um, I can ask you that. Not on, not on camera. What? <laughs> what? I was going to ask you, do you want more? Oh, ooh. no. <clears throat> no. <laughs> I mean, I think I, I would. I would if, you know. If everything's right. If everything is right and I didn't have to work. Like. <laughs> I, I feel that. <laughs> like, I just want to sit down and don't do shit. But no, I feel like, um, like Finn, since she's grown up with me and I've grown up with her, obviously. Um, it's a bit different, yeah. she understands my work schedule so and now she's of age where i can take her with me so i'll take her on my retreat she'll come to greece she'll she's coming to kenya with me this year like she goes all over the world with me and she understands right so she knows my schedule and she's like she's a little mini me so she hangs out with all the people that are on my retreats and they love her so i feel like to throw another kid into that would be a lot hectic so yeah. it definitely would come at a time where you know i've settled down and not as on the go yeah, yeah. i'm not as on the go anymore because i could do that with a nine-year-old and we could travel a lot but with a newborn baby yeah, you're in total no gas eating thing madness <laughs> no uh-uh. <laughs> so alice let's talk about fitness yes let's talk about i i want to say i saw i started seeing you post more like fitness fitness content maybe through the <laughs> pandemic am i right have you yeah. wait, talk, talk to me about i know yoga is a form of of fitness, fitness. yes it's a, it can be strenuous for sure yeah especially the type of yoga i practice but yeah no i mean fun fact i am also a personal trainer and a spin instructor really yeah. i didn't know you were a spin instructor yes i am you taught in abaco as well yeah yeah, okay. also a little spin that, girly. You teach one class. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I mean, I also strength train. I have a trainer, Mario. He's freaking amazing. Um, and then I also spin. I have a bike at home, so okay. I, I try to mix it up a little bit. I, you know, I definitely do understand the importance of strength training. They can go hand in hand with yoga. Mm -hmm. They are very, very important. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I. I do a lot of fitness. I work on my fitness. You know. <laughs> <laughs> were you always, were you, were you an athlete growing up? Why are you laughing? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? Ooh. Um, <laughs> I take that as a no. <laughs> um, okay. I imagine you laugh so hard. Why? Yeah, because I was just like, damn, should I lie? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, well, okay. Actually, I played rugby. I played rugby. Yeah. Such a rough sport. It's an amazing <laughs> sport. It's the best sport in the world. Um, that's the only sport I ever got rugby? into was rugby. I you played play rugby here? Canada. Well, I played rugby in Canada. And then okay. when we came back here, we had a girls team for a little bit. Okay. But um, that kind of fizzled out. I'm not sure if they're still playing now, but I'm not playing They now. played for a bit in Freeport. Too, yeah, yeah. Freeport. So I think, no, I think what had happened was I ended up moving to Abaco. And so it kind of fizzled out for me. But um, yeah, rugby was the only sport I've ever played. Before that, you would not catch me dead. <laughs> dead. And I only played rugby because it was like a prerequisite because I was doing... Um, therapy at the time so you, st <laughs> so you started that in university then. i started out in boarding school and okay, boarding they school. said that i needed a way to release your uh, your anger my anger anxiety <laughs> and trauma i was gonna say rugby is a rough i remember i played yeah. our, my, i played volleyball in college and my coach decided it would be fun to put us in teams and have us play rugby <laughs> one day 
And I just remember my roommate, she's very competitive and she we playing no tackle or whatever, like or no, no contact. Oh, you need contact. She did not get that memo. Yeah. She, <laughs> it's impossible to have a rugby girl not well, we, contact. We wasn't in no gear and stuff. Y'all don't wear gear though. No. No. I mean, yeah, see, that's not my See, type that's of sport. that's what makes it great. I don't like people in my space. That's why I played volleyball. Me and my team on our side. <laughs> and you on your side. No, rugby, you get up close and personal. I remember sometimes when I would be in the scrum, I wouldn't shave my legs. So I can like rope my leg against my opponent so we can get the ball in the sky. Anyway, so I'm digressing. It's very, uh, <laughs> very it got commitment. intense. It got intense. <laughs> like it was intense. That was like some of the best years of my life. The camaraderie, the community, it was chef kiss. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But no, but outside of that, nah, I wasn't doing shit in PE. I wasn't running. I mean, I, w- I used to run before puberty. <laughs> then the bongi came and it was like nah that's that's a wrap too much too it much was, to, to bring along yeah, 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 yeah. but no nah. so when did you decide was it beef that you were gonna like was the spinning and personal training accompanied by the yoga cert or like i was you- a yoga teacher first and then i <laughs> The place I worked at, they were just throwing me at everything. They were like, like, we need you to do this and this. You need to do this. You need to do this. And I was like, okay, cool, fine. I'm good. Like, but nah, yoga was the one thing that stuck. That's your really like. Yeah. Like, I mean, when it comes to fitness, like strength training and stuff, I mean, I can personal train myself. I mean, do I want to personal train other people? Probably not. I definitely. me? Pressure. We should do that one day. You should set up for you to come in the gym and put me through a workout. And then I put you through a flow. Yeah. (laughs) Good. We'll be on the same level then. (laughs) First of all, (laughs) I don't know if I should be flattered or offended. (laughs) You should be flattered because you're like fitness god, man. Yeah, no, I couldn't. I mean, I definitely could. could. I could, for sure. But it's just, for me, yoga is more my thing. Like, I'm all, you know... I can write a good ass regimen, but when it comes to like watching people doing reps and sets and all that, that does get a little dry for me. <laughs> like I just want to do it on my own. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Like it gets a little repetitive. Yeah. It does, but I think, at least for me, like when I'm training clients, we talk too. So yeah, in yeah, that yeah. space, it's not just like all right, one, two, three, four. <laughs> like yeah, 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 next yeah. thing. I mean, it is very repetitive. But yoga can be too when you're going through. The it can salutations. be salutations, but I feel like for me. Yoga just seem more. It's more my job. From an instructor standpoint, I think it is a bit different that you're walking around a class, like yeah. adjusting people. Mm-hmm. Whereas training is like I just gotta watch you and tell you exactly. I was just be sitting there feet, watching a struggle, <laughs> like just chilling, sitting down on the bench, like while we dying. I don't do that. I get, I get up. <laughs> I move around. <laughs> yeah, but no. I I mean, throughout all of that, I feel like when it comes to my fitness journey though and even within my yoga journey there are some things i still do want to keep to myself Mm -hmm. because it it makes it a little bit more sacred and i don't just feel like it's a job all around and it's like so toxin Mm -hmm. like even for yoga there's certain styles of yoga that i only practice for For myself like i don't teach that style of yoga because it's still something that i could hold on to that's yours yeah yeah because i feel like when you in this fitness industry it's just like you've given 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 so much to the point where like you'll find yourself teaching classes and then you're like shit when's the last time i practice for myself like when's the last time i lift a weight for myself yeah. you know like i'm just always on the go so i feel like you have to like keep some things for yourself so that's for me is strength training and cycling for sure that's your personal that's that's my yeah. jam that, that's when i could just zone out i ain't gotta worry about nothing else do you it's do a peloton me. I have um, I have a Nordic track. Nordic track, okay. Because Peloton's so hard to get over here, man. Like you have to like set it up and then they ship it. And it was a whole. Is it too much? It was too much. <laughs> so I just got a Nordic track. Okay. But I yeah. Spin bike though. Yeah, spin okay. bike. But I mean, even though I have the Nordic track that has the whole like like Monitor online classes and, and stuff, I just still do you my just own. Hop my on own, and do your own. Do my That's own me shit. too. I usually just. Yeah, I don't like to be told what to do. And I want to play my own music. Exactly. I don't want to <laughs> listen to your weird rinky dinky music. And then music. talk over it. <laughs> yeah. And then you talking and shit. Like, uh, let me make my own playlist. I want to climb when I want to climb. I want to sit when I want to sit. I mean, I do like sometimes I like being pushed. Because if, if it's up to me, I may just sit there and cycle at the same speed for 30 minutes. So sometimes yeah. it is. I, like, I switch it up. But. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I agree. All right. All right, so Alex, I know you recently launched your YouTube channel. Yes. I subscribed. Thank hey. you very much. I haven't done anything yet, but I subscribed. Wow. I appreciate the honesty. Yeah, Damn. I'm going to. 
Yeah. I said I'm go I really am going I'm gonna start. Yes. I need Please to do. Yeah. Videos or it didn't happen. Ooh. Yes. Pressure. Okay. Pressure. <laughs> tall, tall, tall. But yeah, no, I started YouTube uh in February, I think. Mm-hmm. Or end of January and it's <laughs> it's taxing. <laughs> it's a lot of work. But um just a way for me to give content to people that they don't have to pay for because I want to make sure yoga is accessible to everyone Mm -hmm. and that's what people have been begging for this entire time. Yeah, YouTube is (laughs) YouTube is huge for fitness content Um, I was actually speaking with someone last week that was like, they gave me the stats on like how how much fitness content Mm -hmm. is uploaded on YouTube per day and it's like, it's insane. It's a lot. It's insane. And it's actually the biggest fitness resource and wellness resource yeah. library but even like from a yoga standpoint it's pretty much all the same type of people mm. <laughs> so I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah um so i definitely wanted to add a little bit more mm-hmm. flavor a mm-hmm. little bit more you know flair because i i my whole spiel with yoga Especially, you know, as I love how you said it like that. <laughs> as an instructor, is I want people to know that yoga can be different. Like it doesn't have to be the water droplets and slow movements and stuff like that. You could, you know, practice yoga to some soca music, some dance hall, mm-hmm. some reggae. You could have some calisthenic based movements. You could sweat in yoga. You could focus more on like arm balances, handstands, just like stuff like that. Like I want people to know the variations Mm -hmm. when it comes to yoga and stop having this like preconceived notion that you know it's just something that like skinny housewives do (laughs) (laughs) like no seriously man it's it's not just for the rich and famous it's not just for the rich and famous it's not just you know when you want to you know get a quick little stretch in or when you want to feel zen or when people what people tell me when you want to fall asleep in class like it, it there's so much more and i really want to convey that with my youtube channel mm-hmm. so i'm slowly starting to push out more content when i get the time to you know get stuff on there to kind of put into that big mass of fitness content mm-hmm. that you can see different things um yeah. and definitely a lot more things come in for sure to immerse people into my style of yoga is the channel going to be primarily yoga content are you thinking mm-hmm. of like diversifying it a bit i'm thinking about putting some lifestyle stuff on there too like some recaps of my yoga retreats That'd and then cool. hauls and stuff like that mm-hmm. to really because i mean when you even really look at like yoga content on there like yeah there's fitness content but like when you're looking for like the right type of mat to buy or the right type of blocks mm-hmm. or you know what do you need to start the alignment sake like a lot of that isn't really on there mm-hmm. and then i also want to diversify where it's not always just me you know where mm-hmm. i can get you know someone to speak for people with disabilities or someone mm-hmm. to speak for you know women who may have bigger breasts and want to modify a, po- a posture or whatever i can't help you with that <laughs> <laughs> damn it <laughs> but no i i want my channel to have you know inclusivity and diversity and i feel like that's at the forefront when it comes to me in the yoga world i want to make sure that everyone feels comfortable i love know? that i know when i started um youtube i had people that were like in the comments like I'm so it's so refreshing to be following and subscribing to a fitness channel where the people look like me. Yeah. Like, and I, w- I was very intentional about bringing on. I had beginner to intermediate yes. to advanced, all different body types it's as my guests. So important. And people are like, you know, like, and these these lay all of them they get in it. So they're like, you know, it feels it's good to see that like, you don't just have a bunch of people that look mm-hmm. like they've been working out for 20 years Bang. teaching exactly. me how to do this thing and yelling at me but you got people that just and, and i feel to. like that's important too because even sometimes me as a teacher like obviously i've gained some flexibility and mobility now i just feel just gained some flexibility okay. just a tad just a little tidbit <laughs> a little you know <laughs> but even sometimes i feel like i can kind of lend that you know misconception like oh shit i gotta be flexible to do this so i feel like mm-hmm. it's so important to have you know different bodies yeah. and at different stages in their practice and also knowing that you know even if you have a bigger body that don't mean that you can't be a, you know seasoned practic- practitioner mm-hmm. so you know once you have a body once you breathe in you can practice yoga so see you on youtube yes <laughs> <laughs> no vid- videos or it didn't happen 
right? Yes, videos are didn't happen. So that means once you like, I have this one guy. His name is Sammy, and he does every single one of my yoga my yoga and videos, tagged, right? <laughs> and he has tagged me, and it it fills me with joy. It, like because like I mean. <laughs> Going from Instagram, I have, what, like, 500,000 followers on Instagram to YouTube, where it's, like, 1,500. <laughs> and not to say that, you know, Listen, it quantity took, matters. It took me almost a year to get but, to 1,500. But it's, like, it's humbling because you really see the people that they are for you. And you also get to watch it grow. Exactly. I think and, that's the beauty of YouTube, And too. I think that that's what I'm loving so far now because I feel like I'm back in 2014 where it's just like, wow, this is cool. You had to start, yeah. Yeah, and it's the same thing with TikTok. I started on TikTok now and I'm just like, this is cool, like I, watching I'm, the growth. I'm trying to Do get it. into it. I'm on it. You're on it? Yeah. I follow, you follow me too. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think you follow maybe the, the team page. I have two pages. It's just a lot going on. I, I think I've seen your, your workout. I'm pretty sure I follow, we follow ah, each other. You did, you did like a little BTS video the other day of you working out. Oh, like a mic'd up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I really <laughs> like that concept. I, I might steal that. Just putting that yeah, I just, on. It just was gonna, like a five minute video that I, I chopped up. <laughs> I love that though. I love that because it was so raw. It was yeah. perfect. I really like that. But yeah, no, I feel like starting on different platforms, coming from a platform where you already have a lot of followers. Well, established, yeah. Number one, you got to humble yourself. And number two, you have to enjoy the growth. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm like feeling it out. Like, okay, yeah. maybe I'll change my covers for next week. This looks yeah. a little dumb. Figure Let me fix this. You know, yeah. things like that. So, well, yeah. What I also, well, now my, my Instagram used to be my bigger platform. I mean, I got half a million followers, but. Oh, my God. <laughs> I got like 20. It's quality 20, 20 over K. quantity. I'm just saying, but I had 20K on Instagram and my YouTube. Like, so it took me almost a year to get to 1,000. My YouTube now has almost 40,000. That's amazing. And it, so it grew. That's amazing. Once it hit the thousand, it was like. See, so now you're probably monetizing it, eh? Yeah. See, I want to get to that stage. But then watch hours, boy. Y'all better go and practice all of my videos. You got to keep uploading. That's what that means. <laughs> <laughs> More videos you are gotta, coming this week. You I gotta promise. keep uploading and use the shorts too. Yeah, no, I started put. I started posting shorts. Yeah, and I think they've added shorts as a as a metric to get. You can get 40, 40, Is it forty? It's a hundred thousand watch hours it or ain't like that much, Alex. It's a hundred. <laughs> I, I kid you not. It ain't hundred thousand. It's like forty thousand. No, it's four thousand. Four thousand. Okay. Wait, no. One of them numbers. 4,000 or... Four, I always mix it up. 4,000 maybe. So I think right. it's 4,000 watch hours. And 1,000 subscribers. And 1,000 subscribers. Or if you don't get the 4,000 watch hours... It's you a have million views. On shorts. On shorts. I feel like you get that. Cool. I think I'm like at like 10,000. Just keep putting your, your reels on shorts. Yes. So... But I've come to a space now where I am realizing that this is my career yeah and enjoy the process too, and like. i'm enjoying the process um, but i'm also putting a little bit more into it intention behind it yeah, yeah more intention because i mean it was never my intention for it to get this big and so now i'm realizing okay it's, th it's this big shit <laughs> it's this big let's start let's, let's make it make sense yes let's make it make sense <laughs> instead of just you know going out on a wing and a prayer mm -hmm. so now i'm planning more stuff so definitely going to see more vlogging i love it oh my god i love watching like, vlogs i hate doing them because i always feel like people are gonna be like just girl talking about it. that's what's like <laughs> holding me back but i'm gonna start doing more vlogging i'm gonna do like some bts especially stuff especially how you travel yeah exactly it makes sense right but the anxiety in me is high just do it just it's do high it. but I, that's that's my intention to you know put more of me out there more video content so people can really see you know what goes on behind the scenes I would like to vote for travel content and a day in the life. Okay, I can do that. I can do that. They could be intertwined, but... I can do that. Yeah, I'm going to India next week, so I feel like that's a great spot to start. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so are you going to India for a retreat or... Yeah, so I'm going for a two-week intensive in a style of yoga called Ashtanga. So you're, you're doing a... No, I am taking... As I mean, you're taking... You're going to participate in I'm going in to it. someone else's retreat. Ooh. So I am leaving my teacher hat at home, and I am going full student mode. I cannot wait. How long is it? Two weeks. Two, two and a half weeks. Two and a half yeah. weeks. Okay. When's your next retreat? My next retreat is in June. I have a couple more spaces left for it. It's in St. Lucia, June 22nd to the 27th. A whole freaking 
vibe you've done st lucia before yeah so i'm going back to the same venue which is one of my favorites all of the rooms are like ocean view and this mm-hmm. time i got breakfast lunch and dinner included a hey. 60 minute massage Ooh. three different excursions when is it June 22nd to twenty seventh. Don't give me that. <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm here for it. Let me know. But um, yeah. And then I have that. And then I have Greece. I have three spots that just opened up. Greece is in August. August. Okay. Everything else is sold out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when is your birthday, Alec? August 8th. August I'm a Leo. 8th. You're a Leo. Yes. I'm August 30th. You're a Virgo. I am. Hey. Yeah. Y'all, y'all are the... <laughs> <laughs> surprisingly but you're not very no, no my chart has a lot of virgo in it and scorpio i feel the virgo in you a little bit yeah it's 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 there's a lot of virgo the i'm pr- very we say in german sucht und ordnung. i'm very like strict yeah very my, anal my therapist actually asked me last week she's like how good are you with being good enough <sighs> child or, or not being good enough but how good are you with good enough like if you're doing something how many times do you yeah, no. Go back and like. It's never. It's I never told good us, like I'm. It's never good yeah, enough. Yeah, I'm like I. I get okay when this is this is fine. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's never good enough. Yeah, the Virgo, the Virgo is strong in me. That's so I understand. It's not a bad thing. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I mean, we create great businesses. Obviously, we're quite successful. Yeah. Hmm? Per. <laughs> per. I love that you pause before you do it. <laughs> I want you to. I want you to head a pee. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no. So um, you got Greece and Greece Saint Lucia. and Saint Lucia. Yeah, those are the two for this year. So June and that's August. Right, that's right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which one? Oh, I know you. Would. You're more excited for Greece. It's fine. No, Saint Lucia is beautiful too. Though. Saint no, Saint Lucia is. I've never been, but my brother. I think my brother went. No, it's it's gorgeous. And he he sent me pictures to tease me. Like yeah, the the mountains and it's it's top tier like it's a beautiful destination i'm excited for all of my destinations this year like equally i'm also doing kenya that sold out in like two weeks mm. i was like shit <laughs> 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 i couldn't even like turn around i was like damn okay i guess we sold out so i'm excited for kenya Kenya's and kenya. when is kenya kenya's in november okay but towards the end of the year yeah so it's it's a whole vibe man it's a whole vibe. that's awesome mm-hmm. top right. tier stuff all right alex we got oh, my game. Oh Jesus. <laughs> I was wondering what this paper was this whole time. <laughs> we got our game. It's very easy. A couple of this or that questions. Very light. Just want to get to know you. I mean, okay. we, we should know you a bit better now. I hope so. As we get near the end. But it's a little bit more. You know, some things we didn't touch on. Okay. I feel like this is going to stump you from the, from the bat. Now you can. I don't <laughs> want you to bait in. I don't want you justifying. Just pick one. Okay. <sighs> okay. I will try my hardest. Dogs or cats? Oh, shit. I know. Let's go. Oh, that's hard. No. Three, two, one. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm going to... You could only have one of these for the rest of your life. No. <laughs> <laughs> that made it worse. <laughs> that made it worse. That made it so final. Um, I would say in this... Don't say in this season. I tell you, don't justify. I cannot help but justify because I have both. I know you do, but it's okay. You, dog, love, you, dog. Love, you love one more. I know. Dog. I knew it. Yeah, I'm dogs too. Well, I mean cats. No, though. no. <laughs> cats. I do love cats. I love them both. Equally. But you already picked dogs, so it's fine. Yeah, but I love them both equally. <laughs> okay. <Does she? laughs> Call or text. Uh text for sure. Yeah, I'm text. Netflix or YouTube. Uh, YouTube. I just cancel Netflix. Really? Yeah. Those fees, man. What fees? Which mean like the subscription? Yeah, it's just too high, and I don't use it. Yeah, you don't. You're not justifying. The yeah, the way purchase. my ADHD. Is I really set don't up, watch it that all. I, I watch, cannot. I watch Netflix maybe on the once every weekend. Exactly. I have no attention span to sit down and watch a show. It's just not happening. Yeah. Unless it's anime. But I feel like the the moment I cancel, I can want to watch something on it. <laughs> nah. Only thing I can watch straight f- is anime. That's it. Other than that, I like anime. I love anime. We love anime. Oh my god. Okay. Good stuff. I never got into anime. I think I just work so much as a child. <laughs> <laughs> This is a lot coming up I mean, right now. I mean, not in like a bad way, but <laughs> a lot to unpack. My here. parents also didn't let me watch TV through the week. So, oh, and then when I got older, I was working on the weekends with my dad. So like, I never really, nah, I never really watched TV like that much anyway. It's just I've just always have ADHD. So it's, you actually have ADHD. Yeah, I'm okay. diagnosed ADHD. Yeah, I'm not one of those people. Like I feel God. like I need to be diagnosed. 
Yeah, I got diagnosed with too many things. Since. You got diagnosed as a child or? No, last year I got last diagnosed year. ADHD and OCD. And I may need to like, get, your, get your contact. Who's do the diagnosis? Because me and Ethan been talking about. It. We're like we looked up some of the like signs, and we no. have a lot of them. Yeah, it's and it's good to know. It's good to know. It definitely helped me along my mental health journey to have answers. The actual diagnosis. But I'm in. Yeah. I'm I'm shopping right now for a therapist. That's that's the number one thing. So I actually just got one last week. Yeah, that's what I need. I need one here. I had one when I was in Toronto, but I need one here. You want to actually physically go to them? Yeah. Do you? I don't. I mean, she gives me the option. but Oh, I, it's online? I do a Zoom, yeah. But oh, but she's here. She is here, so I can go to her, but I'm just lazy. I don't like to drive. <laughs> <laughs> I just want someone modern. I want someone that can actually deal with my issues and not judge me. So I feel you. Yeah. I mean, if you want, she does free consults. If you want to talk yes, to her. Yes, I will definitely get that information from you. Okay. All right. Cardio or weights? Weights. Fuck cardio. Hey, amen. <laughs> Savory or sweet? Sweet. What's your favorite sweet thing? I love fruits. Yeah, I know. Sorry. I was expecting yeah, like a candy or dessert. No, I mean, I'm not big on candy, to be honest. Um, I like desserts. I like like a carrot cake or a cheesecake. Okay. But I definitely will pick fruits. You like fruit. What's over. your favorite fruit? Oh, that's hard. I like... <laughs> I, I can't just do this or that, okay? Yes, um, that's okay. the game, Alex. My top three, my top three would be mango steens, dilly. Mango steens, dilly. I love me a dilly boy. Dilly. I haven't had dilly in a really long time. Ooh, I got like six dilly, dilly waiting on me back home right now. And then um, I also love um, pomegranates. Okay. Yes. Toast or eggs? Eggs. Do your chickens give you eggs? Oh, yeah, every day. I don't pay for eggs. You know, I just, <laughs> I just researched because Margo was asking me, how do chickens mate? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. It's, it's brutal. I know that they do, but the, the mother can also do eggs. Yeah. Without, yeah. So and, if, and if she doesn't mate, they're not actually chickens, right? Yes. Okay. So, so it's kind of like a, like a, well, more like or a, less like a chicken period. I was going to say, yeah. I was going to say like a miscarriage, but. That's a little harsh topic, this, but yeah, yeah let's just call it a period. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit. But yeah, you know, you need a rooster. Intense. You need a rooster. But even then, if a rooster fertilizes an egg, she still needs to sit on it for a good time. Which she may not really do. Yeah, if and she, so uh, if she's not in the mood, she won't sit on it. And oh, sometimes they eat their own eggs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. We digress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Physical book or audio book? Oh, that's hard. There's a time and place, depending on... Sorry, I, I feel <laughs> like I'm. Justify. I feel like I'm fucking up your game here. It's okay. But audiobook, if there's a good narrator, physical book, if it's like, especially if it's like nonfiction and you want to take notes. But I do both. Yeah, I got into audiobooks more just because I would I fall asleep re like reading physical <laughs> books. I, I it's so bad because I like to read in bed, oh. which of course is not the best way. To, yeah, no. To read, no. and I end up. Honestly, yeah, I'm so. reading a bunch of books right now, man. What I'm, are you reading right now? Right now, I'm reading a book called Piranesi, um, which is like a folklore book. And then I'm also reading Lord of the Rings. Okay. And <laughs> I'm also reading uh, the Graveyard Book. And I'm also reading. I can't read more than one book at a time. Yeah, it's a struggle. But I mean, I I have ADHD. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think that's why I can't. Like, I need to. No, I like different. Like, I like variety. Uh, yeah so if i just like i have this thing where i'll read a book and then i'll like take it down to like the last 20 pages and then i'll just like it. i do that too yeah but and I, i'll go hard at this one book for like four or five days yeah. straight till i almost done so and i I'm found like, that when i have different books and i read like a different one each day then i am more inclined to, to yeah get through it yeah that makes sense ice cream or chocolate ice cream <laughs> I, was trying to think. I haven't had ice cream in a long ice cream is a I mess, love ice mess cream. up my body man especially like, like a nice gelato my stomach ooh love me some well, we gelato we went to Italy for a honeymoon I ate gelato every day yeah don't tear man I love a good sorbet every day a good sorbetto I'm, I'm big on sorbet but I love, I love. I'll do, because you like fruit, yeah. Yeah, I love fruit. <laughs> I love fruit. I mean, not that I don't. I said it like I don't like Yeah, fruit. you said it like, I was just like, okay. <laughs> I like well. fruit. Just not as much as you, maybe. I love <laughs> fruit. Love fruit. All right, Alex, that's all my questions. That's it? Yeah, it wasn't that many. Before we close out, I want you to first 
look into your camera and tell the people where they can connect with you, where they can find you, all okay. that good stuff. You can find me on <laughs> <laughs> You can find me on Instagram at Baha Yogi. I'm also on Twitter. I'm also on TikTok and on YouTube, Baha Yogi TV. And I think I'm also on Facebook, but I don't really be on that like that. But yeah. And also my website, www.bahayogi.com. Awesome. One more thing. You can look back into your camera. And last piece of advice. One, what's your biggest piece of advice? that you would like to give our viewers today? And it could be on anything, life, yoga, anything mm. in between. Share us one, one of your favorite quotes. Um, what's on your heart to share today? Okay. My last piece of advice is life is too short for later. So do it now. Whatever it is, do it now. I Just like that. It. Life is too short for later. That should be on a shirt. Should yeah. Put that it, on a it's, shirt. I, it's one of my favorite quotes. It's in German, but I just translated it. What's it in German? Das Leben ist zu kurz für später. 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 <laughs> später. So mag es Später is later? Yeah. Look at me. Das Understand. Leben. I mean, context. Clues. I want to hear you say it. Das Leben. Das Leben. Ist. Ist. Zu. Zu. Kurz. Kurz. Für. Für. Später. Später. Yeah. I can't put it all together. <laughs> Jawohl. <laughs> that <don't> <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it's just like, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I was like, are you crazy? Me? <laughs> <laughs> so you speak German. Is, do you speak any other languages? I speak German and English. Those are my uh, mother tongues. And then I also speak Spanish. But I haven't used it in a while. You know, if you do learn languages, if you don't you use, it, use it, you lose it. And I'm currently learning Arabic nice. and Greek and Greek. And Greek, because you love Greece. Because I love Greece. <laughs> and my best friend's Palestinian, so and my uh, niece is half Egyptian. So I need to have some kind of Arabic going on now. A little bit of something, something. <laughs> it's in the family. It's in the blood. I got you. Yeah. All right, Alex. Thank you so much for coming through. We could toast our... Wait, I drank <laughs> a lot more than you. <laughs> yeah, I just got hot Sprite. <laughs> <laughs> so Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you for having Gracing me. Gracing the Flex Pretty podcast. As Margot says, it's Flex Pretty and not shitty. <laughs> we make, wow. We, <laughs> we is, make, that, is that we your make, logo? We may cut that out. That's not the official logo. Oh. No. <laughs> Our slogan, no. Flex shitty. Flex, flex pretty. Not flex not, shitty. Flex pretty, not shitty. Flex pretty, not shitty. How are you supposed to flex shitty? Though? I don't know. That's, that's Margot's. Slogan um, for the show. I, lo I love it, Margo. <laughs> Good shit. Thank you for coming through, Alex. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. I'll be back. You'll be back. I mean, you sure? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you again, Alex, for being here. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Also, subscribe to Alex's. Alex's <laughs> YouTube <laughs> channel, uh, Baha Yogi TV. I will link it below in the description as well, as along with all of her social media links that she dropped earlier. So you can be sure to connect with her, follow her, be sure to check and see when her retreats are so you can get in on those because they sell out fast, you know. Ciao. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and until next time, y'all, I'm your host, Bowflex Barbie. See you then. <laughs>